one of the um, issues that I'm going to just speak briefly about, do some frameworking, is whether there is bias in the criminal justice system and, and how uh, that is measured in, and from where I sit, it's more often calibrated, if you will, uh, by looking at uh, what happens in sentencing, what happens at the end of the process. So I want to focus briefly on sentencing and whether there is implicit bias in our sentencing regime as demonstrated by unwarranted disparities in sentencing. Um, you know, as at the outset, we, we want to go back to pre-1984, and there is a many of you, especially those of you who are uh, trying cases like my former law partner, David Axelrod, who was a, a you know, prosecutor, a baby prosecutor uh, back before 1984, the, the big concern uh, was whether the judges were being fair in giving some of these indeterminate sentences to uh, you know different types of uh, defendants, and and it was largely thought that uh, they were either not tough enough, or they were being too tough. And there was there was documented disparities between sentencing that uh, minority defendants received, vis-a-vis -vis those received by similarly situated non-minority defendants, and so we uh, it, in this environment. We got the Sentencing Commission guidelines, which came on board in 1984, and uh, they were thought that it was thought that they would reduce the unwarranted disparities, and and they did, but they brought on another set of problems. One, most judges, myself included, thought that the guidelines were a bit rigid, and didn't permit for individualized sentencing. Uh, Mr. Feldman certainly was able to uh, convince many of us uh, that, uh, you know, guidelines <coughs> were, were a bit too rigid and, and didn't uh, give us room to operate. It deprived us of our discretion, which judges always guard very jealously. And so in 2005, we have Booker, and the uh, mandatory regime was re replaced by a, a, an advisory regime. <coughs> And there has there have been studies uh, which show, and you know, I have this, I have some of the studies with me, that Booker significantly increased uh, racial disparities, even when you control for offender and 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 crime uh, characteristics. For instance, post Booker, there was a four percent increase in the average sentence. Uh, of blacks versus their white counterparts. This is an increase in over 75% in the racial gap in sentence length, and, and what it resulted in was about a two-month difference, which may seem inconsequential, but as a sentencing judge, two additional months in prison <coughs> is never inconsequential. Um, what was surprising uh, to me though, was that the increase in racial disparities was, um, it was determined that it was, uh, those, those increases resulted from post-Booker appointed judges more than anything else. Uh, so the judges who grew up with the sentencing regime, with the guidelines, were less likely to fall prey to sentencing disparities than judges who were appointed after 2005. And, and <laughs> you know, I'm just reporting this. I was as surprised as anyone to see that that was a trend because I would have thought that the trend lines were, were, were different. But new judges sentenced black defendants to an additional 5.5 months compared to uh, comparable uh, white uh, defendants. So, and, and I think that a lot of that had to do with the fact that, uh, you know, new judges were finding their way. I, I know that for me, the guidelines were helpful because having not been a judge before I went on to the bench, uh, having done some criminal work but having mostly a civil practice, the guidelines gave me structure and a framework 
within which to operate. And then by the time I got comfortable with criminal sentencing, you know, then I was I felt free to deviate and 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 uh, to try to uh, make for individualized sentencing. The one other uh, factor that I'll mention uh, when we look at implicit bias and sentencing disparities is the role of the prosecutor. You know, post Booker, uh, many prosecutors. Well, before I get to post Booker and pre Booker, you know, one of the the, the issues. Uh, with the prosecutors is that, you know, they determine what they, they, they determine the charge. And with certain charges in the, uh, in the federal code, as Judge Nachmanoff will, will, I'm sure, um, discuss, uh, they are these mandatory minimums. So mandatory minimums bring their own baggage and create their own unique set of problems. But post Booker, many prosecutors were less willing to forego charging mandatory minimums unless the judges, uh, or, or when the judges sentence defendants to terms below the guideline recommended minimum sentence. In other words, increased judicial discretion uh, post Booker changed prosecutors' treatment of statutory uh, mandatory minimums, which Booker left intact. So uh, black defendants were more likely to be charged with mandatory minimums than similarly situated white defendants, and thus more likely to be sentenced to a mandatory minimum. So uh, prosecutorial charging is also uh, likely a uh, substantial uh, contributor to the kind of sentencing uh, disparities uh, that we see. So, you know, when, when we were speaking uh, right after lunch today and we were talking about some of the options that we had available to us, we're going to have to look uh, not only at the guidelines because, uh, as Judge Nachmanoff might talk about the and and this uh, uh, schedule for this program, uh, the uh, Sentencing Act Reform and Corrections Act of 2015 will address some <coughs> issues, but we need to look at the judges, we need to look at the prosecutors, and we need to look at the sentencing scheme. And I think we're going to talk more, uh, Jim, about um, that later, but. That's all I have on my opening. Well, thank you, Judge. 